my buddy just stopped by with some food grade 55 gallon drums for water collection. Brought him up from Connecticut, like only 20 bucks down there where he was at. Uh, he was hauling a camper up here this weekend. So it was pretty sweet he picked these up for me. Thanks, bud. And they smell so amazing. They have mocha frappe and caramel sauce for uh, for coffee. Probably Starbucks or something. They smell so delicious. They're like giant frappe barrels. So pretty sweet. That's uh, over 120 gallons. I oh, know 220, 240 gallons of water collection there. So that should help out a lot. Got to get them hooked up to the cabin and to the shed. Look at this bunny just sitting on this stump. He's not sure if he should run from me or not. He's so cute. Sitting on a stump in the middle of the woods. You're hilarious, bud. This bunny is so funny. Like chilling out here by this giant puddle. Oh, took off. Scared it. Just like like sitting on top of things. It's so weird. That bunny's always like trying to find the highest point to sit on. Rabbits are everywhere. Daddy. Come on, get it. Spring of go, 2020. Go, go. Setting up the canvas tent for the year. Oh, yeah. oh, baby. Got the family up at the it. plantation. Bailey had it. Oh, she did? She was running with it. Right she it. And Abby's she such a good dog that. now. Bailey. What a good girl. Right here. Bailey's a crazy dog. Yeah. She's so cute when she does that. What is that? Let's <laughs> take her out. <laughs> black cow got the wheelbarrow all prepped up with everything I need for the day a lot has happened the last couple days um, the Sun's come out and it's like 80 degrees it's May 22nd 2020 and uh, got the got the canvas tent set up when my family was here um, they were gonna stay in it, but nobody actually ended up sleeping in it. Cause it's still kinda cold, so people stayed in their cars. But got that all set up, still gotta stake down a couple spots on it, and then it will be all set up for the season. And then, then we opened up all the holes from where the potatoes were last year, and we mixed in some cow manure in each hole, and then we planted some Pontiac red potatoes. So this whole thing is potatoes, Except for two holes will be pumpkins again this year, like last year. But mostly this is just going to be potatoes. They did a lot better in this Hugo culture garden. And this side will be zucchinis and green beans and some kale. And maybe some cucumbers. But I'm just going to dig up some lanes for everything and put some holes in. And then mix a little bit of that um, black cow, cow manure in there. Should help feed it, plus I'm gonna feed it some other stuff throughout the summer. Bat guano and uh, rock dust and stuff that I got. So, should be able to get this garden pumping. It's crazy, it went from being like freezing cold every single day to the, like literally frozen one night to the next day being 80 degrees. Really crazy that there were no leaves on the trees two days ago either. And now almost all the trees have leaves on them. So, back to the summer routine. I start hauling water. I didn't put enough money together this winter to build a proper well. But at some point, I think my neighbor might come and help me out with a piece of equipment he has next door. And we might dig a well. And then I'll just have to get some cement, cement rings brought in for it. But until then, we're using the well that we put in last year, and it's flowing really well. The whole thing is filled to the top. So I'm able to get, like, pretty much 20 gallons at a time out of there. And then it only takes, like, half an hour or so to fill back up, and I can get another 20 gallons. 
So as of right now, it's producing plenty of water, but we'll see if that changes throughout the summer because we've only gotten about, we haven't even gotten an eighth of the rain that we got by this time last year. But it also continued snowing until halfway through May this year, which last year it did not do that. But I still think that we don't have a, nearly as much water or as much um, like rainfall on the ground as we did last year. So hopefully the well keeps producing. But I'm going to get back to work. Greenhouse is set up too. So I got to start watering all this stuff and hauling water today. Back at the 100 acre plantation for another summer. I got the wheelbarrow all packed up. I already watered everything, but I'm going to go up and work on one of the gardens. Cut some trees down here, and this is where all there were a couple different things coming up here. Um, one is some bush that I hate, it like spreads under the ground, and it's basically a weed, as far as I'm concerned, and they're really hard to get rid of. So that was coming up, plus all these blackberries. These are all blackberries, blackberries, blackberries. So I cleared it out so they got more sky and sunlight, and now. Um, we're still going to burn some of this wood, but we're going to leave some of it here to help break down and fertilize this patch of, of blackberries. And I cut out all that, that other stuff that was just like crowding the area out. So now this is just blackberries right here through this whole area. So hopefully they're getting enough sunlight that at the end of the year this will be like a real permaculture patch of blackberries. Head nets back on. It's May 23rd, which this is when we planted the vegetable seeds last year. This is the day that we finished putting, building the greenhouse and we had put the vegetables out. I already have a lot of vegetables in there that are already like three weeks ahead of that. So we're definitely ahead of schedule compared to last year. Um, and as you can see, the black flies are out. Been out for the last couple days. So got about three weeks of dealing with these guys and then it will just be mosquitoes the rest of the year. Mosquitoes are out too, they were getting into the cabin still. I'm not sure how they're getting in at night, but it was only like five or six of them throughout the whole night. But I put the netting up around the bed so that way I can just get a good sleep at night and not have to worry about the mosquitoes eating me alive. I'm gonna head out back. The black flies are awful down here by the cabin. All right, so this year we pushed back a little bit of the wood chips just to the edge and put some manure on it and mixed it only about three or four inches in just so the top has a new layer. And then we'll water it. And then once we plant in a couple days, we'll push those chips back over it and then probably make some more chips. Just make sure there's full coverage everywhere so we don't get weeds. And then next year, we'll just add top fertilizer and not dig these up anymore. Kind of turn this into a no-till type situation. So this is going to be green beans, kale, uh, pumpkin probably, some watermelons or some sort of melon, and zucchini and yellow squash. wood chip layer is done for the most part once we put the frame to the greenhouse up we'll see if we need to add any more to fill in this area or, or, or bring up any low areas but for the most part this is all the chips there's a lot of brush to get this many chips it took me about well, I guess it probably only took me about five or six hours of chipping spread out amongst a couple days but now I've got this greenhouse in a box it comes in a million pieces so I'm gonna spend the next couple days putting this together alrighty so all we have to do now is anchor this or measure it out to make sure it's square and then anchor it down and then we have some poles we got to put in here and then you put the top in and weave these poles here in in the skin 
and then it will be all done. But as you can see, it's still not. I need to get a little more coverage right here and a little bit more on the edges here. So I need to collect a little bit more sticks. That's probably about half of what I'll need to finish this. And last night when, when the sun was setting, I could see there's a couple trees in here that block a lot of sun at the end of the day. So I'll probably just cut those ones down and throw them through the chipper and get this all sorted out. So hopefully it'll be done by the end of the day. Poor little bastard, looks like he got run over. It's out in the street here. Really blue, nice color. Out on the road here. Hear a motorcycle coming. This Bushmaster 270cc Beast Chipper is doing great. It starts up every time I start it. Gonna change the oil after we finish this project. I think the key to keeping that thing running is changing the oil a lot. So, all framed out, anchored down, plenty of chips, pretty thick layer now. Shouldn't have any weeds going through that. So, I don't know, it's kind of windy right now. The bugs are kind of crazy. But, uh, I don't know, I was thinking I could put the skin on this, but maybe I'll wait until tomorrow morning. It should be, the wind should be a little calmer then. I'm excited though, this thing's almost done. This poor little bird just ran into the window. Pretty cute. Pretty small. I don't know what kind of bird that is. Have to look it up. But I don't know. It kind of looks like its wing was broken, but it, it just hit the window not too long ago. So leave it here for a little while. See if it snaps back to it and is feeling better. But if not, maybe I'll collect some worms. And feed them for a couple days, see if it gets better. Um, if it doesn't, something will just eat it tonight. So, check back in later on it. Well, she recovered a little bit. She flew over here onto the car. But I think her wing is messed up, but it doesn't look like it's life threatening. So, I'm not sure what she's gonna do. You don't want to hang out on the car though, the car is black. It's going to be really hot up here. You should hang out over here on the wood pile in the shade or something. You can still fly, but you can tell your wing is a little messed up, buddy. Alright, well good luck. If you're still here later, I'll find you something to eat or something. Well, there he is in the tree right there, she. This flight was pretty good. Looks like she's kind of got herself together. Her wings kind of messed up, but it's, she's still flying straight. So it can't be that bad. I'm sure she'll be fine. See you later, little bird. You gotta look it up and see what kind of bird it is. All right, after a lot of hard work and even a couple of days in 90 degree weather, 104 in the greenhouse yesterday when I was trying to put the last pieces on with a head net and full cover from the bugs that's really hot uh, that's also really hot for for late May in Maine it's never that hot at this time of year um, it's supposed to get back down to 67 degrees in a couple days with near freezing temperatures at night so I don't know what's going on with the weather but it's uh, gonna be 90 degrees today, so it should be over 100, 110 in the greenhouses. But here it is, all done the right way. Ground is even, the, uh, the skin on this greenhouse is a lot tighter because it's measured up a lot better than this one was last year. So we just kind of put this one up so we could get it up fast. Uh, this one I took my time, so it's all uh, nice and tight. Got a lot more floor space because of how tight it is. Probably another like foot and a half of floor space in here.
covered it all in the chips. Made all the chips over a couple day period. Um, I don't know, I'd say this is, all the chips that are here is probably uh, enough of these gray birch trees to cover a quarter acre. That's what I had to cut down and then process to get these chips. And now I'm gonna put these uh, T-posts in and I'm gonna run a string line Put two T-posts over there, run a string line, and then put all my T-posts in in a straight line so they're nice and straight. So everything looks real neat. And then this greenhouse will be ready for action. 2020. Super psyched. This is going to be a good one. And the shed are right here. I don't know why this camera is acting up. Son of a bitch. Yeah, greenhouse and shed are right there. These are grouse eggs. I just jumped her and she took off, but I jumped her the other day and she came back to them. So as long as I don't touch them, she'll come back to them. But there's like one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. Eleven grouse eggs. So I should have a bunch of baby grouse running around in a couple weeks. Pretty excited. It's May 27th, just leave those alone and let her get back to them. Um, I've scared her a couple times. I was in here trying to cut some trees down, free up some of the sunset when I discovered her. Whoa, it's pretty thick over here. <laughs> Looks like some thunderstorms coming in. I got the greenhouse. Oh man, I was, I was still all zoomed in. Son of a gun. Well, there's the second greenhouse and the greenhouse from last year. Got a whole bunch of zucchinis and plants and everything going in here. Oh, it's all closed up for the night. I'll show you it tomorrow when I go to water the vegetables. <laughs> oh, I've got some dishes left over from last night. That's what the cabin's looking like in the spring. Got this net. Same people that make my head net make this net for the bed. And it works pretty good, but I just moved it around. I just moved it around quite a bit because I had it so the opening was right here, but since I'm so tall, my feet hang off of this bed. And it was like opening things up at night and the mosquitoes were getting in. So I have it overlapped and tucked. Mosquitoes can't get in. I can slide in to the bed right there. Got the tablet and the AR. All cozy in here. Some of my own art. And yeah, that's it for the summer. So when it's really hot, it does suck. It takes a long time. I haven't been going to sleep. I haven't been going to bed early enough. Um, the last couple days. And it's only, it's only um, the end of May right now, but it's already been 90 degrees. So on these really hot days, it takes a long time for the cabin to cool down at the end of the night. You know, it always gets cold outside at night, even when it's 90 degrees out at night by like 9, 10 o'clock, it'll cool down. But then I have to get the air circulating in here because I don't have any windows in the back here. That was the biggest mistake with the cabin is not putting a window. I should have put a big window that was big enough for me to get out of so I could use it as an exit if there's a fire ever. And probably by the end of the summer, I'm going to have to do that. Before next winter, we're going to have to cut out this wall and put a window in here. But yeah, when we're in here, we're in this net. And I have a net to set up over the cot in the canvas tent. So when people come and visit, they can stay in there. And then sometimes on really hot nights, I'll probably just stay out in the canvas tent because it's a lot cooler in there. Uh, the canvas tent cools down as soon as it cools down outside. But these nets are important. When you live in heavy mosquito area, make sure you invest in one. If you live in a heavy mosquito area and you don't plan on using it, you should probably just have one just in case. Well, May 28th, I just uh, thinned this thing out some uh there's some green leaf lettuce curly leaf so about to have my first salad of the season pretty pumped glad i got things started early in the cabin well it's may 29th i think 
might be the 30th, I don't know. Um, I think it's the 29th. This garden is still waiting for plants, but for some reason, it's been 90 degrees the last three days, but it says that this weekend it's gonna drop down to like 36 at night. So I don't wanna risk the squash and stuff that might have a problem with that. Let's keep them in the greenhouse. Um, potatoes are merged and they probably won't be affected by a couple nights as long as it doesn't freeze but it's not going to freeze it's going to come really close but uh yeah that's northern maine for you but i have uh red pontiacs emerging all over this whole thing's just going to be full of potatoes this year i'm going to do one pumpkin there and one pumpkin there and just pretty much let the pump let the potatoes take over last year we put some squash in here and they didn't really get enough nutrients and they kind of crowded the potatoes out shaded them out so just straight potatoes we should be able to get like we put eight pounds in here and I think you know we're aiming for like 60 to 70 pounds out of here I don't have enough potatoes for the winter and then a bunch of stuff in here green beans cauliflower kale all of our greenery for the summer hot out here though especially when you're dressed in full safari gear and a head net the whole time and it's usually not this hot this early so it's probably gonna be really hot a lot this summer and hopefully we don't go into a drought because if we do my well might dry up I can see another spot on the hill that's kind of leaking water by my well I think I'm gonna dig it out and put another barrel in so I have a, two different wells that I can draw from give me twice the water the water coming out of there is ice cold and it's definitely really clean, especially compared to what we had last year. It's really clean. Yeah, just living the dream still. Alright, May 30th, 2020. Got all kinds of stuff. Two rows of kale, row of broccoli, row of beets, and two rows of carrots. You can't really see the carrots, but they're there. Not a lot of them, but they're coming up slowly. Uh, got all this stuff coming up. I have green beans planted here, and we just had a downpour, so everything got watered real nice. Well, right before it downpoured, I was collecting piles of grass, grass cuttings from the neighbor's house up the road. My buddy Jim, he gives me his grass, the first cut grass off his field, so I can put it on the gardens for fertilization and for mulch. So we're going to spread it out on that new garden over there and there's some corn. There's some Native American popcorn coming up here and then some sweet corn coming up. So now that we have some stuff coming up, we can put the grass in and really get good coverage so we don't have to worry about weeds coming up. And as it breaks down over the summer, it'll also add a little bit of fertilization to the garden. Definitely keep the moisture in there too. Really, really good. Which, uh will mean less watering for me and when it rains well it'll go a lot longer we also put a bunch of grass in here and try to fill this in uh, the green beans aren't up so we'll keep that pretty open but now that all this stuff is up we'll fill all this in with grass right up to where all of the vegetables are coming up and that way it should keep a lot of that moisture in the stuff has been going dry I've been having to water this a couple times a day which sucks. But once we get this grass in here and piled up really thick, uh, we shouldn't have to do that anymore. It should help preserve a lot of water. And that piece of celery, it was some dying celery that my sister left when she came up and camped. And I cut all the extra stuff off and put it in there. And it actually looks like it's growing. I have some new growth on it. So that'll be cool. I might have some celery. You usually have to start that stuff like 10 weeks ahead of time to get it to go to do anything out here so let's see that was a store-bought celery we'll see if it grows be interesting if it does beets are coming in thick too which when the beets come up the leaves will come up and we'll eat those leaves and we'll eat the kale leaves while they're small and we'll be making salad we'll make a kale salad tonight there's so many of those small leaves we'll go through there and we can pull a salad out of there easily tonight but we'll, we'll keep on eating those as they grow. And then once they get to a point where the leaf is getting a little too big for making salads with, um, we'll thin it out so they're not overcrowded. And then we'll let them grow until fall into real beets. 
we'll have roasted beets this fall, which is delicious. So this new garden next to the cabin is going pretty good. Not bad. And the other garden is just waiting for plants, which I started in the greenhouse. This was all seed straight in the ground. And the other garden from last year, we're still going to do plants for that we get started in the greenhouse. So the gardens and the vegetables are going well. Beginning of May. Should have a lot of stuff a lot earlier this year, so. Got stuff going really early. We should have a lot of stuff this year. Hand it out to the neighbors. Well, that rain we just got sure helped. Um, got the whole garden nice and wet. Saves me some running the water. But all of the holes that the potatoes were put in have come up except for that one hole. Um, hopefully it comes up in the next couple days, but that's awesome. Pontiac Red. All of them. So, potatoes are blowing up. Looking awesome. In about two or three more days, we'll plant everything in here. The whole garden will be planted for the year. We just gotta keep it watered and try to fertilize it a couple extra times this year. So I probably could have gotten higher yields just last year if I had just uh, added a little more bat guano to her. So that's the plan. It's going well though. Still May 30th. Nice downpour though, always helps. All right, got all that grass laid out. It's definitely a thick enough layer. I shouldn't have to worry about any weeds getting through there. Um, but this was forest floor, so I don't know, some of the ferns and stuff, um, that might be able to push through, but we'll just keep pulling them out. So now that that's all done, I'm getting a fence put up. Which is a good idea because I think the bunnies have been chewing on the broccoli at night. So I get this fence up and we should be able to stop that. I could definitely use three more of these T-posts, but I don't have them so I'll have to wait until later. But once I get this up, these gardens will basically be all set and ready, planted, and just going. Well, absolute disaster. Luckily, I brought all those things in last night. All the stuff I've been working on the last two and a half months. Just got this garden all sorted out. Everything was seeded and everything was coming up. The kale didn't die completely, but it's pretty fucked. Broccoli, pretty fucked, almost dead. Um, not, die not dead completely, and the beets look like they did pretty good. Um... And the carrots, pretty much the same that they've been this whole time. But the Native American corn, which is straight in the ground, pretty much died off. I think that they'll come back though. We'll see. Tonight it's going to freeze again, so I'm going to cover it in hay. And then tomorrow I'll take the hay off of it in the morning. And hopefully that helps. But yeah, 90 degrees for the last four days. And then last night it got down to 33 degrees. And it's going to get down to 31 tonight and it might snow. And it's June 2nd. Just totally getting screwed out here this year with the weather. Not getting enough rain and the cold weather just keeps coming back so late. Like, it's usually never freezing at this time of year. I mean, you usually but once Memorial Day comes, you don't have to worry about freezing temperatures anymore. But of course this year... I'm relying on the garden almost completely. I need the garden to work out this year and everything's gonna freeze and die off on me. I mean all these plants I started like freaking two months ago inside. It's a complete disaster. So I have to go sort things out and see how I can get stuff ready for tonight to see if I can get things in a little bit better condition. Um, all these carrots here, they look like they're not completely dead, so maybe if I cover them in hay for the night and then uncover them tomorrow, they'll live. But man, what a crying shame. All my green beans up in the greenhouse, all my zucchini up in the greenhouse, all of it died last night. It's absolutely crazy. I mean, 
usually you're fine in a greenhouse this far in the year. Like, I've never had stuff in the greenhouse die in June, beginning of June. Absolutely crazy. Can't win. There's riots all over the country right now because of the George Floyd thing that happened. And uh, Antifa is going crazy, destroying entire cities, burning entire neighborhoods. And coronavirus is still kicking. 2020s turned out to be quite a fucking year. Look at that disaster, though. This is cauliflower, which is cold weather plant. It should be able to live through cold weather. It didn't, though. Zucchini, dead. That's that lettuce living. Kale's pretty much living. All the green beans are dead. Well, June 2nd, 2020, replanting a bunch of seeds. Um, pretty much all the cucumbers, all the green beans, which I had green bean plants that were like knee high with flowers on them already. Uh, they died, so, so did a lot of the corn. Most of the corn on the property is dead. So we're replanting all that stuff. It's June 2nd, it frosted last night, but Hopefully last night will be the real last frost, but we're going to bring this tray inside every night until uh, until I know it's definitely summer. I don't know what's going on this year, but we usually don't get two consecutive days of frost in June, ever. But um, I was warned that if you put stuff out before the first full moon in June, that it could get frosted on. You know, historically that does happen. And I was warned by other farmers in the area of that. But I was trying to get a head start on things. And I figured the greenhouse would protect them. But since it was like 90 degrees for three days. And then suddenly dropped down to 31 degrees. Even in the greenhouse the green beans all died. Which is too bad. So did all the squash plants and zucchini plants. But I've been bringing some of those inside every night. You know, I bring, I brought in enough plants inside every night that the garden we had up, 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 out back last year, I wanted to make sure no matter what happened, I at least had plants going for that garden. So, we do. At least we have enough plants for that. And that one, that one breed, or that one um, species of, of lettuce right there that's in that thing, Man, that stuff does not care about how cold it gets. I've been leaving that out on the porch and it has no problem. It's the only plant out here that hasn't suffered at all from the cold. So definitely going to let those go to seed this year. It's whatever that, whatever that, uh, whatever that strain is, it's definitely cold resistant. So that's the lettuce I'm going to grow every year after this. Uh, just get these seeds going again and hopefully get back on track. Well, June 4th, and this is the second salad that I've harvested this year. But after the next couple days, the plants I have planted out there, the lettuce plants, should be producing enough that I can do this every, pretty much every other day. And then after like a week from now, I should have enough that I can eat a salad every single day. So, pretty psyched. Back on the salad bar thing. Makes lunch really easy. Just go out and pick it, put some cheese and croutons in there. And then eventually I'll have some cucumbers and tomatoes and carrots too to add to this thing. But that's going to be another month, month and a half before that stuff starts coming out. But I'm able to get this lettuce going really early. And this one, this is some Grand Rapids. Um, tip burn resistant. And this stuff, for some reason, can live through some really hard frost. It was not affected at all by the cold, so I'll be growing a lot of this next year. No rain. Water system's hooked up, though. This is everything I managed to save after the freeze the other day. This stuff I was still bringing into the cabin, keeping on the porch. That frickin' Grand Rapid lettuce didn't care at all. Oh, that was nice. Got the fence up, got grass from the neighbor all laid down. Even the kale, which is red Russian kale, which can usually deal with some pretty cold temperatures, that died off. Not completely, but it looked ugly enough that I pulled a lot of it up. 
and I have I have that in bulk seed so I just put more seed down because I like them when they're younger and the younger ones pretty much got fried the beets didn't have a problem and the carrots really were barely even up but the carrots look like they didn't have a problem and all my green beans died but all the green beans in the in the uh, seed garden here are coming up now not the pole beans but the pole beans should come up in the next couple days and then all the seed garden will be going again after this freaking frost two days of frost in the middle at the beginning of June really sucks uh, the Native American corn is coming up and there's no sweet corn I have sweet corn planted in trays once it comes up I'll put you know six or seven um, plants in there and then we should have a row of sweet corn throughout the summer I put sunflower seeds in that one and the plan was to do some yellow squash and zucchini over there but so many of them all the ones that were in the greenhouse died in the freeze so maybe I can see what I have for seed and we'll just plant seed over there and see if that comes up uh, zucchini and yellow squash should come up fast enough that it'll still do some stuff out here and then those those parts of the bed won't be empty but this garden I'm not too worried about I didn't put any fertilization or anything on it I'm just mostly prepping this this garden right here for next year getting the grass and the wood chips laid down this year and let it break down a little bit and then next year I'll put a layer of manure right on the top of the mound and cover it back over with grass and this will be a good little garden but this garden's definitely going to produce some vegetables lots of lettuce and carrots hopefully and some beets and green beans in the back <sighs> so it's beautiful nice and warm it's like those two days of frozen weather didn't even happen it was only two days ago but it's so weird it's like 90 degrees for three days and then suddenly it got down to 28 degrees I wasn't expecting that but things are going again and getting back on track it was kind of a bummer I had started everything like two months ahead of time to have everything going and you know I just put them out in the greenhouse one week too early it got so cold it murdered everything I gotta go eat some dinner alright you see this see those little tracks right there that's the snake track right next to it but those little ones right there I believe those are the baby grouse and that's where they were where the eggs were right in the bush right there I see lots of mama grouse tracks over here by where the ground bees live she's probably been coming out in the morning and in the evening and eating those ground bees to get some food in here while uh, while the eggs are going but those are much smaller than a grown grouse um, I suppose it could be maybe a blue jay or something but I don't know that looks like a baby grouse track to me so I'm gonna go in there and check on the eggs and see if she's still sitting on them and see if they're just a bunch of hacked shells or not I don't know if you can see her but she's right there I'm not going to go any closer because I don't want to mess with her. The eggs are definitely going to be getting close. She usually flies off if I'm this close. But the birds, she might have a couple hatched under there. Um, I don't know. But I don't want to harass her. I want these eggs to finish up and these grouse to be on the property. So we're going to leave her alone. But she's got to be getting close. It's been, been over a week and I think it's only like 10 days to hatch on these things. So, we'll leave her alone. Let her go back to what she's doing. And I'll crawl out of the jungle she's hiding in here. Pretty thick out here. <laughs> That's the greenhouse. Man, it's thick in here. I wonder if she has any babies under her. Um, I would think she probably does because she would usually take off on the eggs. If they were just eggs, she will usually leave if I get too close. She might have some babies in there. So those definitely look like baby grouse tracks. It's getting nice. Oh, look at that beautiful canvas tent over there. 
still staying in the cabin, but probably move out here for a month or so this summer once it gets really hot. The dump truck's been going by a lot today, doing the gravel on a new road somewhere up the road. So I'm working on my car here. There was a rat's nest in here this winter and I cleaned it out. But it still smells like there's some rat mice going on. It's actually a mouse nest, not really a rat, but I can see that. It's a new filter I just put on. You see they chewed it up at the end, little bastards. So I'm going to put some traps out for them. But look at that, they have a snake skin in there. There's a snake over there too, so I don't know. There might be a snake in here that's been fighting with these things. I'm not really sure because that's a shedded skin, so it's not like the mouse just ate a snake in here, which is possible. Cause there was a there was a dead snake over here where this mouse was getting its food where I dumped my sink water. But that looks like a snake that has shedded his stuff. So I'm gonna get in here with a flashlight and remove that filter and see if I can find this nest that's further down in and get it cleaned out. And I don't know, there might be a snake in here somewhere. So I'll have to take a look and see if he's in there. But I see it's chewing, so that the mice that I killed earlier this year isn't all of them. There's still mice living in here. I gotta take care of it. Going to work on the water system up at the shed. Solar power has got almost everything charged today, which is pretty sweet. Man, I was just thinking these dragonflies are out. And the mosquitoes are really bad, but they're really helping out a lot. And it's so weird. It's almost like having... It's almost like you hired some tech guys to make these little these little robotic flying creatures to catch the mosquitoes. They look like little machines when they fly around. They just fly so perfect and straight and they hover so well. And when they see a mosquito around you, they just come and grab the mosquito. Just so perfectly too. Um, it's amazing. It's crazy that this is like a wild creature. Definitely crazier than a human even like the way that they operate is just so weird but I need to I need to figure out how to get more of them because they really put a killing on all these mosquitoes they don't touch the black flies though I guess the black flies are too small probably for them to see or or to catch but man I have two of them right now right around me and they're just murdering the mosquitoes as they come after me once they see that you, you attract them, they realize that, they know that. Every time I come out, these couple that stay right down by the cabin, as soon as they see me, they know I'm the one that attracts the mosquitoes. So they come over here and start harvesting. Dragonflies are so cool. Well, there we go. The first 55 gallon drum water collection system on the garden shed. Thanks to my neighbor Joe for picking me up four of those food grade 50 gallon drums, or 55 gallon drums. Um, they smell so good. They smell just like a caramel frappe. They actually said caramel frappe on them and, and the other ones say, two of them say caramel frappe, two of them say mocha frappe. Man, they smell just like the caramel frappes you get at, at McDonald's, which aren't really good for you, but on a really cold day they can be nice so there we go a little lean-to for the generator and gas and stuff we don't want to get wet but we don't want in the garden shed and good water collection and I have enough stuff for the water collection system to do it on the other side the only thing I'm missing is that right there the spout the downspout uh, they didn't have any left at the hardware store when I went apparently some other guy just moved up here and he was putting all his water collection system up on his new cabin. So he bought everything. But they got another order in next time I go to town. I should be able to pick up another one of those. And then I'll have two barrels on this shed. And that's going to help out a lot if it ever starts raining. This is probably the driest season I've ever been a part of up in Maine. But a couple years ago there was a pretty bad drought out here. And it seems like this year is going to be probably another drought. But... A drought up here means that the, the, the lakes and rivers get low, but usually there's still enough rain that, you know, a fairly decent well won't dry up. And, um, yeah, usually it doesn't get so, so dry that it's like a desert out here, but 
Uh, the neighbor did say a couple years ago his uh, his well dried up. So hopefully it doesn't get that dry because I got a hand dug well out there that's being fed by the spring and if the spring dries up then it's going to be a long walk for water every day. Hopefully this will help a little bit though. This guy was stuck in the greenhouse. He's all tuckered out now. I think if I get him something to eat, it'll re-energize him. I'm gonna go catch a mosquito and give it to him. They're all around right now because it just rained. This poor little guy needs some energy. Got a snake next to the cabin sunning itself. There's actually two. Big snake, small snake. But they're usually a yellow-brown color. It's crazy how dark he can make himself uh, to absorb the sun. But that might be the snake that was eating the mice out of the out of the spot in the car. They're like trying to pretend that they're grass or something. See him waving his head. They wave themselves around in the wind to make themselves kind of look like plants. Uh, those two, I don't know what they're doing. They must be a breeding pair. They should have already had their babies, so it's kind of weird. I don't know. Usually don't see snakes hanging out like that this late in the summer. Or this late in the spring. Be summer in a couple days here. Get closer, but they're going to take off once I do. Pretty big guy. They're just gardener snakes. That one's pretty big though. It's definitely been eaten. It's probably big enough it could eat some small mice. But I probably couldn't eat a big one. The one that I caught the other day that was living in the in the cabin filter in the car would be way too big for this thing to eat. But I think a snake climbed in there and ate all the babies. Which is good, because I was having a problem with those things, and I caught the other one. I caught the mother, the mother mouse. So now I just got to get to a shop vac somewhere so I can vacuum out the squirrel cage. And the rest of that, and the rest of that, uh, blower, blower area, cabin filter area. And then the car will be clean. Right now I can't run the AC, because all I can smell is rat and mouse crap. I don't want to run the AC, that's how you get hunter virus, breathing that shit in. These snakes are just lounging, loving life. Well, the wind is blowing, something fierce. It's not that bad, but hopefully you can hear me. June 8th, all of these potato plants have recovered since, since the frost killed them down to the ground. That was like eight days ago. And today I fed them with the first feeding on these things. Last year we didn't feed the potatoes very much, but this year we're going to feed them as much as everything else in the garden and see if that makes a difference. It definitely should. And these are Pontiac Reds, so they should make more uniform round potatoes. Last year we did the russets. And the russets, um, they grew well, but they got all messed up. Yeah, the wind's blowing really bad. Got some lettuce, some kale and some cauliflower but that cauliflower as you can see looks pretty messed up from from the freeze it was in the greenhouse and it's still uh it, it got down to 28 degrees that one day after three days of 90 degrees so yeah everything pretty much suffered i'd say the only thing that didn't suffer is the kale which suffered a little but hardly at all and this lettuce didn't suffer at all like that lettuce can definitely go down to freezing temperatures in the greenhouse and then those little ones right there are some cabbages so those are from some really old heirloom seeds and they took a long time to come up so we'll see if they produce a couple heads of cabbage that'd be nice tomorrow it's gonna warm up enough that I don't have to worry about the cold messing anything's up anymore and we're gonna put two pumpkins on each side a sweep Amish pumpkin that's made for making pumpkin pie like real pumpkin pie pumpkins 
And then over here will be the Big Max pumpkin that we grew last year. And then right here is going to be the squash and zucchini patch. We got some butternut, acorn, and some zucchini, and, and one yellow squash plant. We don't want to do too much of that. We did a lot of that last year. And then right here is supposed to be the green beans, but the green beans died off in the freeze. And I have some popping right now in the cabin. And I'll, most of them have come up now, but I'll probably wait another week and let them kind of get three or four flower, or three or four leaves on them, and then we'll put them here. And we'll put bush green beans here, and then pole beans there, and we'll run poles to the fence. So that's pretty much everything. Another week, this whole garden will be planted. Man, the wind is cranking. Look at it. Tossing everything around. Well, it's getting dark out here already. Here's my lettuce salad set up on the porch. And I just brought this uh, tray of beet greens ready for its first cut. Those grow really well in those trays. You get like two or three cuts like that on them. So I'll probably plant another tray of that. I have a lot of that lettuce planted throughout the property, so... I'm probably not going to do much more of that. I'd rather have them in containers like that. But the beet greens will keep doing in the trays until they won't come up again. The bulk seeds I bought for greens, that's the way to go. Then you can just plant as many as you want and just cut them small and keep planting. Beet greens are delicious. Watered the salad bar this morning. Uh, see that? That's this thing shooting already. Um, I think it's the trays. Because the last two years, last year and this year, the spinach is only putting off three or four leaf sets and then going straight to flower, which is not good. Um, but I think it's because of the trays being so shallow and the spinach just realizing that it can't go any further so it just shoots it just bolts on us yeah I don't know but I, I have some more planted so I'll put I'll put the next ones that come up straight in the garden and see if they bushel out like I don't know you usually get bigger broader leaves and big bunches and, and you usually can get like one or two cuts before the spinach bolts you know at least one big thick cut like that's it shouldn't bolt that quick but I think it's because it's in these shallow trays look at those beet greens those things are doing good I'm gonna eat those today I'll cut like half of those out all the way down to the tray and they'll grow back up probably get three cuts out of the beet out of the beet seeds and for 16 bucks I bought like a pound of beet seeds I mean I could make like 500 trays with a pound of beet seeds. It's enough the beet seeds. I've been working on them for uh, This is my sixth summer. Oh, no, this is my fifth summer since I bought those And I'm still eating them uh, one pound of beet of uh, beet greens can go a long way Bulk seeds you definitely want to get a bunch of bulk seeds put away in mylar bags you get seven to 15 years out of them in mylar bags. You can probably get longer, but you get at least seven years with just about any seed. All right, I gotta go water the rest of the stuff. Just watered that garden too. That thing's doing great. Took a while for things to recover after the last frost, but things are going good. And this, the, those first three rows are um, green beans and they're coming in all the seeds came up really well so they're really thick uh, when I go to thin those out I'll probably dig some of them up and put them in the garden out back since all the other ones died yeah, there's more than enough for this garden it'd be too crowded down here alright wheelbarrows all loaded and I'm up at the up at the garden patch you see these two plants right here this is a Big Max pumpkin, the big pumpkins we grew last year. And then this is a sweet Amish pumpkin. Apparently this is the pumpkin you make pumpkin pies with. 
So, and it's supposed to be pretty big. I mean, it's, they said up to 90 pounds, which is even bigger than any of those got. So we'll see. We're gonna put one on one side of the garden and one on the other side of the garden so they don't fight each other and don't shade each other out. And we'll see which one gets bigger and we'll see which one is sweeter, although I usually don't eat this pumpkin. But uh, um, this pumpkin probably was good enough you could have eaten it, but it wouldn't have been very sweet. But this one is made for eating, so definitely gonna at least try it next year. Try it as a squash and then try it, try to get somebody who wants to make a pumpkin pie. I don't have a stove or oven over here, so I can't make pumpkin pie, but yeah, I'm excited. That sweet pumpkin and the Big Macs. Pumpkins are going in the ground. All these beautiful potatoes and look at those happy little pumpkin plants in the back. Damn, this is gonna be a nice garden this year. These pump, these, uh, these potato plants did freeze down to the ground and die off and that was only like uh, nine days ago. So they rebounded pretty quick and they look like they're doing real good. So I was stressed out at first. I thought I lost all my Pontiac Reds. I got some kale and some lettuce and some cabbage. But we're gonna go get the squash and zucchini plants and that's what's gonna go in the back there. So I just gotta go grab them out of the greenhouse. All right, two zucchini. Well, actually it's one zucchini and then there's two separate plants in one cup that I planted there. So it's kind of like three. And a yellow squash. I'm only gonna do one yellow squash because last year we did way too friggin' many of them and I couldn't even give that stuff away fast enough. I have another spot on the property though that I might grow some more yellow squash in and I'll just give it all away. I'll, 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 I'll grow it planning on giving it all away. So I do have some neighbors who eat it and they freeze it. So the more I give them, more they can freeze and then they can just eat it through the whole winter. So they probably appreciate that. It's pretty easy for me to grow like a lot of it. I mean, it's like one small row of it. You can grow a hundred pounds of that stuff and that's enough for multiple years. <laughs> so everything's looking good. These two holes right here, there's three holes, but I think I'm gonna fill that one in and take some of the compost out and put them over here and cover that up because I don't want things too jam packed in here this year. I want stuff to have room to really do its thing. Um, but we're gonna put acorn squash and a butternut. And then the squash will be all planted over here in this garden. Year two in this garden, I put some bat guano down uh, like two or three weeks ago. And pot ash and um, some azomite, which is rock dust. So we'll see how things go. Wood chips are still doing their thing. Oh yeah, and we put a little bit of uh, cow manure compost too. Every, everything you see open, all the holes that we opened, we opened them and put some cow manure in there. So this thing should be all set up as long as I can keep it watered. It hasn't rained nearly as much as it did last year. So hopefully the well keeps running and hopefully it starts raining here because we've only gotten like pretty much only two rainy days since it stopped snowing. So that's not good. It usually rains a lot, but Maybe it'll start raining next week, you know. It's Maine, so I can say it's really dry right now, and the next week it'll rain so much that I'll be wishing for it to stop raining, so it can go either way. But if it rains regularly, that means I don't have to haul water to this garden, so that is nice. I well, just got back from town, just packed the cooler up for the next week and a half. It's raining out there which is a good thing for the gardens and my get my rain collection systems filling up. But man, I just experienced the saddest thing I have probably ever experienced. Um, it sucks so much. I was on my way back from town, driving the back roads, which speed limits like 50 miles per hour, so I was going like 50, 55. And I popped over this hill, and right when I got over the hill, there was a grouse in the middle of the freaking road, right in my lane. And it was so fast, and I was going so fast, and it was raining, that 
There was no way I could really do much about it, but I managed to swerve just enough, just enough to miss her, and she started flying right as I went by her, and I missed the grouse completely. Um, but everything happened so fast that I was processing it, and I actually did see some stuff in the road, um, and as soon as I went past her, I realized that she had a whole line of babies behind her. And it was so devastating. So I, 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 I slowed down and I turned around. I went back. And when I went back, there were two babies dead in the road. And I mean, there must have been like between six and ten babies with her. And I, I, I hit two of them, I guess. Um, I went back to see if they were okay and see if there was anything I could do. But they were completely dead already. So pretty traumatizing and mom came out of the bush when I was checking on them to see what was up after she realized she was missing a couple and then she saw me and she went back into the bush so I drove off and as I was driving off she came out of the bush to see to see what was up with them but they were both dead so there's nothing she could do about it but basically the saddest moment Definitely the saddest moment I've had up here since I've arrived up here. But I wasn't even going like too fast. I mean, I was going pretty much at the speed limit. I just went over this hill and there was no way I could stop. Like, if I had swerved even more than I did, I would have gotten into an accident. I would have gone off the road. Um, so, I don't know. I don't know if I made the right decision, though. If I had not swerved and I stayed in my lane, I would have just hit mom. And I probably would have missed all the babies. So, I don't know. The babies were so small, though. When I saw Mom, it was so quick that I didn't even see the babies until I went past them. And then I realized that there were babies there. And yeah, it was a sad moment. Pretty sad moment. So, it's a bummer. But we're getting rain right now, so that's a good thing. That's going to help out. Fill the barrels. Be less hauling water. And my grouse is still sitting on the eggs over there. I checked on her yesterday. It takes 23 days for grouse eggs to hatch. And then when they hatch, they're like ducks. They, they hatch, and then they just follow mom until they're big enough to go on their own, which is in September out here. In September, they'll be, after 16 weeks of growing, a grouse will be a full-grown grouse, and it will go on its own way. So, I don't know. My grouse should be having the babies any day now. Sometime in the next two or three days, they should hatch and come out. And then she'll probably be hanging out in in the back of the property with the babies. So it just sucks. I'm like trying to raise baby grouse out here. And it figures I would freaking end up running over some this year. It's just such a bummer. I'm not going to build up the population doing that. I mean, that wasn't really close to my property. That was like five or six miles away. But either way, it's pretty depressing and pretty sad. Now it's going to rain the rest of the day, so... I'm not sure what I'm going to do. I guess just sit in the cabin and think about all the poor little baby birds I just killed. <laughs>